Oh, this conference will now be recorded. Oh, my bad. You sure right. You sure right. Let's start over. Let's start over. So, retained earnings, would that go for uh, cash flows from financing or would that go? It wouldn't be investments, would it? Does anybody want to answer that question? Anybody wants to answer that question? What was the question? Ask your question again. Where would we put the retained earnings? Um, when you did the dividends. Well, I yeah. Don't know, right. When you did the dividends, I guess you did the returning earnings too. I don't know. Because I, don't know. I need Bethany, to use my Bethany is on the right trail. When you when you do the net income and the dividends, you cover the change in retained earnings. Okay, so the retained earning itself doesn't have a spot, but it's used to find somebody else's spot or something other. Spot, you know? <laughs> Say that again. So retained earning it doesn't have its own spot on the cash flow, but it's used to find somebody else's spot, basically, on the flow chart. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, I have like then, one more, or maybe two more things. So, well, let's, I let's, let's stay on this one for a couple of minutes. Okay. <laughs> for a minute or so. Okay, so let me see if I can share my screen. Okay, so here's problem one, and I just put some indications here where things go in part one, two, three, and four. Remember, as we are eliminating items, and so it's a good question, retain earnings. The change in retained earnings was what? So we're looking here. The change in retained earnings was what? 250. We show as a use 100,000 for the dividend. But remember in part one, we show what? The net income as what? 350,000. So, this change of 250 is in two parts. The net income, which goes in operations 350, and the dividends, which goes as a use in part four. Does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Okay. What's your next question? So for land, it went, for mine, it went down like a hundred thousand. It went from a hundred thousand to zero. It went from a hundred thousand to zero. Mm -hmm. And this is number five, by the way. Number but the five. gain, this, but the gain on it was five hundred thousand. The cash proceeds, is that like would I add that to get the cash proceeds six hundred thousand? Yes, but where are you gonna put it? I'm gonna put it. Um, on the source side, cash proceeds from sales of long-term assets. How much? 600000 What else you going to do? Am I going to put the gain on sales on the use side for 500000 Yes, in part one. So so you see here with the land, 100000 was what is the change going from 100 to zero. So it went down mm -hmm. by 100 Five hundred is going to show up as a use mm -hmm. in part one, mm -hmm. and six hundred shows up as a gain uh, in part two. So let me just see. Is that what you so, did? Yeah, that is what I did, kind of. But I put land on the source side as a hundred thousand as well. Uh, I don't know if that's well. Let me just see. Okay. Because uh, I think 
this is problem that you know problem six here and can you see this okay can you zoom in a little like uh, but you can always adjust your screens oh yeah but that gain of 500 is in part one mm -hmm. because if we don't put it here it would appear that you have cash in operations but this gain is not going to carry over and so you don't want to give the impression see without this 500,000 it would appear that you had 3,000 in operations you didn't you show it in part two okay 600,000 okay that's the equipment well, Okay, that so might have been the part that I missed out on, on mine. Like, I did it after I turned it in, but, like, I didn't put it as part of the one I submitted. Well, why didn't you that. do it before you turned it in? Because I wasn't sure, and I was like, I like everything was kind of adding up in a way, but now that I'm looking back at it, it's really not. <laughs> Are you looking at this and see what where how it should look now? Yes, yes. This is how yours now. should look. So you can handle this on a test on Tuesday, correct? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So if we look at this one, this is in number five, you had a gain on that land of 500,000. And so you've got to put that back in part one because that's what created a lot of your net income. And that's showing operations too high. Okay. So when you do that, then you got the 500 here, but then the pro should exceed show 600. The change is 100,000 because if we look down here, the land, the overall change was a reduction by 100,000. So since the asset went down, uh, cash did go up by 600,000, but it didn't go up in operations it went up in part three investments does everyone see that so the solution to this problem was what cash was a hundred at the beginning 500 at the end and so our overall solution to the problem in terms of the change in cash flow is 500. that's always the first thing that you do, okay? Am I on, am I on the right one? Uh, so change was 400, let me just see. This is the same one. Okay, so the change in cash, you know, should have been 400,000. 100 and 400, 100 and 500. That one is for a uh, problem four, not five. Oh, this is four? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let, yeah, let's look at number five because that's the solution I have up. So in four, you know, a similar thing is happening. We had a gain of 500,000, okay? And so that made it appear that we had net income, but we actually didn't. And so when we worked the problem, a similar type thing, uh, in this case, when we take that 500 out, it shows a loss. So in problem four, it shows you that operations is negative. 
he would not be that way if we had not taken the 500 out. So this is a better illustration of that. So in this one, the change was 500. And so that's the first thing we put in. Then we're going to go ahead and put this net income in for 500,000. And of course, the depreciation, that number there, for 200,000. But we're going to come over here and take the gain out. So that you know neutralizes it being in the net income. Both receivables and inventory went up. So they were useless. When the asset goes up their use, and then accounts payable, accounts payable went up, so that's the source. It operates just the opposite. And of course, our depreciation is in. Are there any questions? Can you repeat the part about the accounts receivable being a source or a use? Okay. As we're working the problems, we look at the change. If the asset goes up, it's a use. If you buy a computer, you use cash. So your asset goes up, but your cash goes down. So in this case, the receivables went up and the inventory went up. So you see, I got them as a minus 300. That means they're uses. The liability went up, but that goes the other way. When it goes up, that means you borrowed money and you got some money. You got a student loan, cash goes up. You're just going to have to pay it back. Does everybody see that? Let's see if we can go to. Let's go to problem one. Right, this, these things here. The net income was 350. Beginning cash was 100. Ending cash was 300. So the answer to the problem is 200, okay? It's 200. Now, in this problem, the receivables went up. I got a negative. It would be a use. But the inventory went down. So, so this positive is the source. So the inventory would be on the source side of an operation. Receivables would be on the use side. Is that clear now? And in this problem, equipment went up. But also, the investment in IBM stock went up. So both of these, you know, would be negative, you know, here, which would mean there's a use here, as well as for the equipment. You didn't sell any equipment in this one, okay? So if account receivables goes up, that's going to yeah. be negative. Say that again. Account receivables goes up because it went from 125 to 200. That is negative. It means it's a use. You use 75,000 in cash. Okay. When you when you buy something, your cash goes down. So I got it as a negative. So the negatives indicate that it's a use. The inventory went down. So it, you know, it doesn't have a negative sign, so it will be on the source side. Do we see that now? So because it's a negative, it will be a source or a use? Use. Use, okay. It just depends on how you want to do it. I just, this is a way for me to indicate that if it's a negative, it's a use. The cash went up 200,000. The receivables went up. So some cash was utilized here. So I just put the negative sign indicating that it's a use. 
inventory went down, no sign, so it's going to be on the source side. Got it? Yeah. Equipment went up, negative sign, use. Uh, the depreciation, the change in depreciation is always going to be a source because you didn't spend cash for it. So depreciation is always a source. And, okay, and here you bought IBM stock rather than sell it. So that was a use. Accounts payable uh, went up, so that's a source. And of course, the current assets were sick cash. Well, the account received an inventory and the current liability, they are in operations. The equipment and the investment in IBM stock would be in part two investments. Then in part three, you'd have what? Your long term bond, that's part three. And common and total stock. Liability, you know, but common stock is also in part three. So let me just see if I can. So I just did this to put what part of the statement it would go on. The cash, the change in cash is going to go on what part? Part one. Oh, uh, no. Oh, four, sorry. Part four. Account receivable, what part? Part one. Part one. Inventory. Part one. That's part one. Equipment. Part two. That's part two. Depreciation. Part one. That's going to be in part one. Investment in IBM stock. Part Whether you buy it or you sell it. If you buy it, it's just in part two. If you sell it, you know, you got to, it's still going in part two. You just got to take that uh, gain out operation. So that's going to be part two. Accounts payable. Part one, two, three, or four. I'm waiting to hear. Part one. Accounts payable. Is it part one? That's part one. Current liability, the long term bond. Uh, three. It's going to be in three. Common stock. Three. It's going to be in three. Then the retained earnings is what uh, it's going to be in two places. The dividend is going to be in part three. Mm -hmm. But the net income is going to be where? Part one. Part one. So there's no reason y'all shouldn't make an A now. Hopefully you've been copying this down. Show you where everything goes. Are there any questions? Some of those homeworks weren't looking like that. Can everybody do it now? Okay, good. Will I be able, since I had so turned my in, since I had turned my in, will I be able to resubmit mine? Because on my mm -hmm. homework, I didn't put the numbers down. I didn't put like um. That's when you. That's, that's when you do like some of your classmates did, and they somebody scheduled an office hour earlier today. Somebody had an office hours yesterday. 
So you're supposed to do that so you don't double my work up. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I couldn't make office hours on Tuesday and Thursday. That I have class. They are virtual. So you can schedule it anytime you email me. Okay. No excuses. So you got two things to do on Monday, correct? What's the first thing you got to do on Monday that you got to do by yourself? The paper. You got your cash flow paper that's due on Monday. And you're supposed to do what? Have the name of that. So put in the chat the name of the company that you're going to be working with. Put in the chat the company that you're going to be doing your analysis on. Okay, but I've looked up a couple companies and the balance sheet isn't set up the way your balance sheet is set up. You mean statement of cash flow? Oh, I thought we were looking at balance sheets and income statements. No, Johnson, Johnson, Johnson we're looking at <laughs> statement of cash flows. Oh, okay. Well, okay. And it'll be, it could be somewhat different, but remember, I just, you know, you're looking at, you know, those three areas, operations, they have a whole lot of things in, but your concern is this bottom line, the total in operations, the bottom line. They may have 10 things, but what happened in investments and the bottom line, what happened in uh, financing. Once again, that is an easy assignment, okay? That's an easy assignment. What else do you have to do for me on Monday? What else do you have to do for me on Monday? Anything? The cycle flow chart homework thing? Yes. Is it just like the homework that we just did? No. It's a little different. Does everyone see this? There are three sheets on here. There's a sheet that shows account balances on January 1st and December 31st. That's first sheet. The second sheet is a trial balance with nothing on it. And then a balance sheet with nothing on it. And then the third sheet is cash flow statement. So in this problem, I'm only giving you account balances. You then must go through and create a balance sheet for the beginning of the year and the end of the year. You got to do your trial balances. You've got to do your statement of your income statement, then your statement of retain earnings. Then with that, you, you have to create the beginning of the year end of the year balance sheet and get your changes so you can then put them on your cash flow statement. So how are we going to proceed on this? We're going to start today. This is a team assignment. The co-leader and whoever the team leads decide to work with the co-lead, you're going to work on January 1. That's what you're working with on January 1. 
on January 1, you have the permanent accounts. You don't have any temporary accounts. And you will you are to take these balances, which I have pretty much in alphabetical order, and go and do the January 1st balance sheet. That's the co-lead. The co-lead working with whoever the team leader assigns. You are to come up with current assets, long-term assets, total assets, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, total liabilities, common stock retain earnings. And if you have treasury stock, you got to subtract that out to get your total stockholders equity. And then the total liabilities and stockholders equity must equal total assets. So this is your review problem. In fact, during the pandemic, this was just a regular exam that students took and finished in two hours. They were motivated and scared of the pandemic, so they would do anything I tell them to do. But pandemic is gone now, so. Uh, so looking at these balances then, Coley, you working on this. Lee, you're working on December 31st. So when you work on December 31st balances, you actually got to go up here and do the trial balance for December 31st. So this is December 31st. After you get the, your December 31st totals in, you then do the uh, income statement. Then you do the statement of retained earnings. And then you come in and do the end of the year, the end of the year uh, balance sheet. So, so the trial balance is only for December 31st? Correct. Okay. So let's look at an example. I got land, I mean, I got cash out of order 200 and 100, okay? So since it's 200 for the beginning of the year, all you gotta do is put 200,000 in cash here, okay? How easy is that? So you just gotta put them where they belong. I'm gonna look at one more for you. Notice that retained earnings is 425. So when you do the trial balance, well, when you do the balance sheet at the beginning of the year and you come in to do retain earnings, you have 425 here, 425. But you also are going to have on that ending balance sheet, 425 also. But you know that you're supposed to do what? Go to this retained earnings and calculate the new uh, ending retained earnings. And you put it in here in red. Whatever your number is so that you will remember that 425 doesn't come over here. If it does, you won't balance. Got it? Are there any questions? So that's your review problem to pull What everything. do you mean by new retained earnings? Is that not the December 31st one? Okay. You have the beginning of the year retained earnings at December 31st. You got the beginning of the year. That's fine for the beginning of the year uh, trial bal balance sheet. But at the end of the year, at the end of the year, 
you're going to put that beginning 425 in here. Then you got to put in your net income that you calculated from here, whatever that's going to be. Then you'll have some dividends over here. Let's see what the dividends were. They were 20,000. So you're gonna have some dividends in here, 20,000. And then you get a, so you have a new re ending retained earnings that won't be 425. You put whatever, whatever that number is, you stick it here, then you put it here if you want to balance. Okay, is, there, is everybody on a team here? Is everybody on the team? You can't do the assignment solo? If you want to. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Schofield. Are you here, Schofield? Okay. He's, he's not... Still okay, so Schofield's not able to communicate, but he says he's here. If you work hard, Schofield, we'll ask team three to bring you on since they only have three people. Is that okay, team three? Yeah, that's fine. So Schofield, they like to work, but you'll be on that team. Oh, is there anybody else? So everybody else on here is on a team, correct? I am not on the teams. Dade is not on a team. No. So Dade, let's see if team two will take you. So team two says they will take you. So Strider, I'm gonna suggest that you check one of these teams. I guess check with team three, because they, they may have one more spot. It's a lot of work to be done as we go through the course. You might need to work with someone, but if you're gonna work by yourself, that's fine. But I, I'm already advising you to work with someone else. But if you want to do all this by yourself, that's fine. But you can you start on it. If you have an issue, maybe communicate with team three possibly because they still have just four people. Okay, I got you. Okay. So team leaders and co-leads, you all should be beginning to work. Are there any questions? Um, who's in team two? Boquette's in team two. Ogilvy is in team two, and Robertson is in team two. So you kind of need to cut your cameras on.
for our paper, do we have to put in the um the cash flow chart on on the paper or no? Say that again. For the uh cash flow paper, do we have to put the uh like the company that we doing? Do we have to put the cash flow chart on there? Like the whole right, thing? you just make a copy of it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to send you all to breakout rooms. So just a team will be there. All right, Robert, so it's just you and me. Yes, Professor. All right, so I'm saying it's just me. I'm going to visit the other rooms, and I got to see how they're doing and how you're doing. Okay. <laughs> 